Guys, I know I said I would do this later in the week, but I've been so excited about this and going through all the smart materials that I just can't help but do it today. So this is Thomas and you are listening to Stylized Station. And today I'm gonna to be going over the brand new, all 40 of the new smart materials. I'm gonna be demoing each one. We're gonna hop in a few of them. We're gonna see what's going on. I'm gonna show you everything that's new with all these new smart materials. I am so excited because I haven't seen these yet myself. So let's go ahead and take a look. Oh, this is gonna take a while. So I'm just gonna be using the basic preview sphere for most of these. I might switch it up in a bit, but preview sphere, my good old tried and true friend works great. First thing we're gonna look at are the fabrics. So the first one is the fabric canvas creased. Where are you at? Fabric canvas, canvas creased. Let's take a look, nice. So very similar to the, a lot of the other fabric, fabrics, except we've got um, some cool dust effects on here and uh, some wear on the edges. Very, very cool. The next one is the Fabric Composite Reinforced Used. A bit of a mouthful, but I actually really like this one. This one's super cool. It's almost like a harder fabric and you can see that it's got some nice scratching edge wear and then some really cool dusting inside. So this is really gonna be great for more hard surface kind of stuff. You could even use this as more of a metal material. I know it's got the base, like um, it's got fabric stuff here, but you can probably cut this out. Let's take a look. Weave pattern. Yeah, there it is. You can cut this out. Use this as a really cool rubber or plastic as well. So really, really awesome. The next one, this is one I've really wanted to actually do. This is the, the denim, the jeans. I've been looking for it. Ah, oh, cool. It's toggleable. That's kind of an option that I think most people are going to leave off. And they've got the stitches, most likely using the auto stitcher. Yes, so they're using the auto stitcher to get the jean outline. Right now, it's it's going off of the UV mask, but you can do it off of the curvature or whatever other map you want as well. And you can mess with the distance of this and a few other things. So where is the where's the wear as well? Is there is there wear? They've got the bends, discoloration. So this is what it looks like without the wear on it, which looks really great too. But I also like it like this. That's really good for if you want to add, say, phone wear in your pockets um, or wear in the rips as well. So really cool smart material. Next is the flannel. They're actually adding a lot of cool clothing stuff. So let's see what the flannel looks like. Oh, I love this. I love the wear on the inside. That is great. Yeah, so they've added some really cool thread wear into this. I really, really, really enjoy that. There's a lot of stuff in here, so I suggest you guys download this and check it out yourself. This is so cool. Okay, next one is the linen creased. These next two are gonna be pretty similar, I think. So very cool, looks really good for pillows or um, architectural visualization. This would go really good into some realistic uh, materials inside the house interior stuff. And the next one is also the same thing, but it's got a bit of wear and dust on it. So it looks like they're using grunge maps here with a bit of blur, I would believe, to get this effect. Um, is this the tears here? Yeah, so let's see what they're doing. Yeah, so they're warping, um, they're warping some grunge maps most likely based off of the curvature, which is using the, yeah, the grunge dirt, the grunge dirt splats. So that's really cool. I really like that effect. And that's almost this here yourself is something you can grab um, control C and then throw it into your library of stuff to save. So if you ever want a really cool effect like this, start building a library so you can save stuff like this. What's next? Fabric synthetic dots. I, I already love this. Already love this. It's got some nice little edge wear, very sci-fi looking. And I like the almost like the rubberiness that you can see around here. Very cool. The next one is the synthetic dots sport version so this is almost like a tennis material but it's a little more sci-fi i bet we can just make this we can change this how just by changing the color and keeping a high saturation yep so this is really easily customizable as well and you can make a bunch of cool changes with this stuff so there you go cool some sort of dodgeball synthetic futuristic material again with the edge wear it's got some nice little dirt stains and adding some dirt into the occlusion as well and then you can check out how the pattern's done as well on your own. Okay, that was actually pretty quick. Maybe I'll get through these a little quicker than I thought. Next is the leather, which I'm really excited about. I always have felt like Substance Painter hasn't had a great selection of smart material leather. So let's see what we got. Leather, calf is the first one. Yes, I was super excited about this one. 
So it's nice to see that it's living up to its expectation. Very cool, a lighter brown material. Um, this is really good for boots. I don't even know what you'd use this for, wallets, something like that. Okay, the next one is leather crease. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, cool. So this is really good for furniture, um, car seats and the like. Leather natural colored, here we go. Yeah, finally some natural looking leather. Again, you can tweak this yourself and you can probably add some gloss to this. This is, uh, got a pretty high roughness value. So if we want to drop it and give it a more processed look, you can actually drop it a little bit. We can mess with the height and bring it in a little more. So there we go. We've got a cool material right off the bat in about five seconds. And just by messing around with it, I increased the metallic and now we've got some sort of cool gold. I love this software. And last but not least of the leathers is the rough dark. What does this look like? Ooh, yeah, I like this. I love the white and dirt inside the curvature. That looks so great. What are they using it with? So basic cells, that's really cool. And then they're warping it using cells three. This is really cool. I would, this has got a really great realistic texture to it. And I would use this in a lot of stuff. Big fan of this. The next one, we're moving on to the stone. They only added one, unfortunately. It's a marble piece, marble veiled alpi. However, I'm, I butchered that. Cool, so it's just a um, bit of green marble with some dots in it. You Really cool, this would really go on good on vases and some more fancier stuff. Metals, this is gonna be really fun. Gold damaged is the next one. Yeah, I like it. So with gold, you have to understand that the higher the value of gold that it is, the more malleable and the softer the gold is. So you won't see chipping and you won't see um, cracks in gold, you'll see indents. So this was a really great addition because you can see that if the metal or the gold gets scratched, the, there's no paint, there's no chipping off of it. The metal just folds and it bends to it. Um, so we've got some nice dust and, and grunge here as well. So this is a really cool metal, gold metal material. Really good for like older statues. Iron forged old. Yeah, that's super cool. Really high roughness value on something. Edges look great. Yeah, the dirt looks fantastic and the stains combined together. This is something really great. This is a really great example of how you can combine a ton of stains and a ton of grunge to get a really beautiful looking material. This would really be good for old armor, honestly. The next, we've got a bunch of painted steel stuff. So let's look at steel painted dirty. Really cool. Nothing too special about that one. Rough damaged. Again, not a whole lot going on with this one, but still nice. Steel painted scrape dirty. Oh, this is really cool. I actually really prefer this one to the to this one. I think this one has a lot more character and a lot of the things about materials is being able to tell a story. And this one seems to have a lot more character and a lot more storytelling value to it. I, li I like the dust. This is almost like it's been left out in a junkyard and you can see with this, it's, it looks like it's been rained on a lot more as well. So. Um, a material tells a lot about the object itself. So this is a great story, storytelling material. This is really cool. Again, another scrape material, um, a lot of really great scratching on here. And once again, I was talking about awesome storytelling and this one is really no exception. This has got some great, great depth into it. A lot of great layering. And it looks like they've been em uh, employing a lot of sharpen in their new materials, which is great. So you can see it's using rust, multi-leveled rust stains, more rust, dirt and then a, a, finally the metal base so there's a ton of stuff going on in this one i really like this this would really go good um and, and go really well in like fire hydrants and stuff that is outside and using and, and seeing a ton of use and a ton of wear steel ruined what's this one? Ooh, yeah i'm into it so this is this is really great this is super super old steel um this could be used on a lot of older armor older weapons goodness this is great I love the wear on the um, on the inside around the edges. So this is a really great material. Okay, this is these ones I'm extremely excited about, um, and these are the ones I kind of wanted to make the video for. So this is the new creature 
skins, uh, smart materials that they've added. Um, I've got, again, I've got a new skin pack start coming out, so I really wanted to see what these guys did with it and see how it compares to mine, honestly. So let's take the first one. Creature skin, alien blue. Ah, oh, cool. Ooh, it's got the veins in it. That's good. Yeah, I really like this one. I mean, it looks a little... Um, a little too shiny. I personally would drop the roughness a little bit, but, I mean, this isn't bad. Not bad at all. Really cool. Next one is Creature Skin Green Smooth. So this, I guess, is their, like, orc, lizard, dragon kind of skin. Let's see what this looks like. Nice. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, looks very similar to mine. I use, I use very similar spotting and... They actually do something different, which is green blotches, which I really like, so I might incorporate that into my skins as well. Um, you know what? I'm gonna see how this looks on my character. Okay, so this is Bob. He's my new character. Um, I, I think I got down downloaded this guy off of Sketchfab or something, but um, he's using my personalized stylized human skin, which is on sale soon. Anyway, plug over. I'm going to throw the creature skin on here, the green one. Let's see how it looks. Oh, not great, right. So it looks like it's dipping into the occlusion or the curvature or something and not having the best effect. Yeah, I, I'm not a huge fan of that. What map is that using? Curvature. Yeah, so what I would do is I would personally tone this way down and maybe multiply it instead. No, multiply won't work. Oh. Yeah, something like that. I'd lighten that. That's a little too extreme for me. It doesn't look too great. Um, just as an example, let me show you what mine looks like. And I'll compare the two and you can kind of see the, you can see the difference here. So it's not really based off the curvature. So you don't get that ugly kind of look. It, it does more thickness based, which is a lot better for skin. So let's throw back on the creature skin and you can see the difference. Now I really like the blotching that they use. I really like the blotching that they use, but for sculpted materials, this skin that they have doesn't seem to work very well. I would personally go for a more custom skin myself and tweak it, tweak it on your own. I like using Bob for this. We're going to stick with him. Next thing we're going to do is the creature tongue. Ooh, this looks gross. Ugh. Oh, I love it. So again, they're using the veins in there and it's a little heavy on the curvature again. I wouldn't recommend this, but this is going to look just fine on, uh, on a rounded tongue. Uh, something that has less curvature or less extreme curvature in it, but this looks really cool. I actually really like this material. So they've got subsurface, the zits, oh that looks so great. The yellow, dead, almost diseased kind of cells look great. They've got the pink, so this is really cool. I would suggest getting in here with this one and understanding a little more because this is a really great material. I, I, I do recommend this one. Moving back to my sphere for this bad boy. And sadly, the last one of the creature subset is the teeth. So let's see. Ooh, cool. Yeah, this is perfect. Honestly, this is a great one. This is super great. Uh, really important detail is the grunge in the um, in the crevices. So a monster tooth, he doesn't brush his teeth. So he's going to have a lot of grunge and dirt along the top and along the base of the teeth. So as you start to sculpt out your teeth, if you use the smart material, you'll see that there's a lot of um, a lot of grunge and buildup in here and some edge wear on the top of the teeth. This is a really great material, probably my favorite out of all of them. You could also use this for bone as well, as well for like some sort of skeletal bone. I really like this one. Oh my God, I think we're halfway. So here's another cool one, I think. Yeah, I like it. Plastic dusty. Nice edge wire in here. Glossy scuffed. Again, it's a glossy material. Some decent storytelling here with some edge wear, some basic scratches plugged into the height map, most likely. Plastic glossy stained. Another really cool one. This one would look really good on factory machinery or warehouse pieces. Very industrial. It's got some oil stains on it too, which is really cool. Plastic grainy soft. So this is a much softer plastic material. Typically the bumps in a plastic imply almost like a rubber material. So very cool, not a lot of wear. This is a fresh out of the box material. 
Yeah, I love this. So when plastic gets older, it starts to almost oxidize and has a adds a white coat on top of things. So this is a really great addition and really emphasizes the use of uh, reference materials. They obviously used a really great reference material for this one um, because this is a very small detail that not a lot of people pick up on. Cool. Um, it looks like not a lot went into this one. They brighten the edges a little bit. Um, it looks like heat treated plastic basically to give it a more harder and refined look. And it's very shiny. Plastic thick crack. So this is the dummy thick version of our plastic. Not a lot going on. I don't know. You use this for like dodgeball, rubber, more um, more like toy material stuff. I don't know. This would go with a dog toy or something. It's, it's got some good teeth wear on it. Plastic tool worn. This better be good. Yeah, it is good. Cool, and then this is probably easily changeable just by changing the plastic and the roughness. You can increase the roughness, make it literally just make it a metal by decreasing roughness. So, little tip to everyone: um, low roughness is metal, high roughness is more plasticky and more plasticky and fabricy. So you can mess around with the colors, but let's see. Yep, works pretty well with everything. I, like it, wor it works. This is good, solid material. Now, plastic used soft, so lightly used material. It's got some staining on the edges and some edge wear. Not a lot going on. Very simple bump map. Great. Only a few more guys. Almost done. So I lied. There's another stone one. Sapphire. This one. Oh, I'm excited for this one. Drum roll. Yeah, really cool. So this would really go well for inlays in the floor if you're looking for some wall tiling. Um, this is a really good detailing piece. So they've got the white specks, light edges. This would, yeah, this is a great material. Glass film, dirty mirror. All right, this isn't gonna be too great on this material, but here it is anyway. You can see it's got the edge wear, some oxidization. And if you zoom in close, I bet you'd be able to see. Ooh, oh my God, that's really trippy. Okay, it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. You're gonna have to trust me. Next is something that I'm surprised they haven't had before, charcoal. Nice, not much to say about this guy. Just nice. I mean, how often are you really going to use charcoal? How often? Next is a really cool wood material. Don't make me say this, but it's wood acayu. Acayu? Acau? Um, this is really cool refined material. This would go great on banisters, more fancier wood. Even the stock of a, an older weapon for the bear or for the uh, for the stock. Oh, cool. So they've got some wood ship stuff, finally. Nice. So there's, there's a lot of wear on it. Uh, Ships have a ton of use. They're being used every day. They're outside, so you can see it's washed out. It's whiter. It's it's got no refinement on it. You can see this is where people can have, have messed with it. Next, moving on. Super old. It's got old oil stains, grease stains. This one's really good. I, I really like this one. It's actually very unique. I, this is a very unique wood pattern. Normally, um, with newer woods, you would see that it has a more defined green structure. But as it gets older, everything and all the details get worn down, so you're left with these little, little, these little slits here. Little slits in the material. So cool. Good job. Oh my god, I'm done. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. I think there's some really, really cool new smart materials here. It's some really great additions to the already growing library that they have. I would recommend hopping into the ones you find most interesting interesting, and just ripping them apart, figuring out what makes them tick. And you can almost understand the thought process of the artist behind it and some of the stories that they're trying to tell with these materials. Now, this isn't the only thing in this update. They've also added 20 new smart masks. However, a lot of them are very similar and you can't tell the difference. So if you guys want me to go over those as well, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I think I'm gonna skip that one for now. As always, my name is Thomas and you've been watching Stylized Station. And again, I will see you in the next video.